Hello everybody, on our new channel Summary Club. Only here you will find all the most interesting, useful and popular videos and news of the Russian-speaking internet. We will be covering the most important news about Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and other Russian-speaking countries, as well as short versions of interesting, useful and popular Russian-speaking YouTube videos. So now you can, spending a minimum of time to be aware of the latest events in the Russian-speaking space, as well as get useful information from the most popular videos, books and lectures in Russian language. So today in the Summary Club A Learning and Self-Development Portal we continue to cover the very recent events of the poisoning, as it has already been revealed, of a politician and the country's most prominent physician or Alexei Navalny, with banned chemical weapons. Here's a summary of Yuri Duty's interview with the Navalny family after the poisoning, which has already had nearly 30 million views on the Russian-speaking YouTube alone. The link to the full version of the interview in Russian is in the description. And now, to save your brilliant time, we will briefly go through the whole content of the interview and tell you the most important moments. By the way, you can also find out this information from videos on our channel dubbed by good narrators, so choose what's easier for you to read or watch and let's go. How does it feel to die from Novichok? And so it is the 21st century, the peak of the development of technology and human civilization. Modern people associate chemical weapons with the savagery and certain cruelty of the last century, but not with a democratic state, whose constitution proclaims the human being, his rights and freedoms as the highest value. So to shed some light on the recent events surrounding this story, Yuri Dude, as you probably know, Russia's most famous interviewer with a big audience, interviewed Alexei Navalny and his wife, Yulia, after the poisoning. At the very beginning of the interview, Navalny describes the effect of this poison called Novichok, which, as it turns out, is what he was poisoned with, it doesn't hurt you, but life goes away, and compares this to the kiss of Dementor in the Harry Potter books by J.K. Rowling. Incidentally, as it turned out, the agony Navalny was experiencing on his flight from Tomsk to Moscow was captured on video by a few innocent bystanders on the plane. The heartbreaking screams made a chill run down my spine. He also said that it was, in fact, worse than just painful, which is not, in principle, surprising when struck by a chemical warfare agent, but rather surprising how it could have happened in our seemingly peaceful and developed times. Wife discovers poisoning, but let's move on to Yulia. Yulia Navalny wife and most right person was on her way to meet her husband at the airport in Moscow as Alexei was slowly dying from the effects of chemical weapons. The morning routine was interrupted by a call from Kira, Navalny's press secretary. She reported this terrible incident as well as the change of landing spot, since the plane had to make an emergency landing in Omsk. Yulia didn't hesitate to pack her things and fly to Omsk. The shock and desperate desire to see her beloved brought her to the airport two hours before the flight. And that unfortunate morning brought another terrible news, Alexei immediately fell into a coma. With the weight of this news, the woman sat in a cafe and sobbed. Those were some of the longest hours of her life. Professionalism in Russia is pure chance. While Julia was on her way from Moscow to Alexei, he was quickly treated by airport employees. Then they handed him over to the medical staff, who worked exactly as instructed. This is what saved the life of the main oppositionist in the Russia. But, as he himself put it in an interview, when everyone in Russia works strictly by the book, it's probably a chain of happy accidents. Coma, like in the movies. In general, despite the right help, the politician falls into a coma. On the Glasgow scale, he had a three at the time, which is a state of deep coma. For comparison, a healthy person has a normal value of 15. Yulia also talked about how she broke the news of Alexei's poisoning to their children. Nazar, their son, was playing GTA at that moment. The boy, when he heard the news, did not take his eyes off the game and replied, Really? It's bad, apparently he didn't realize right away that his father was on the verge of death, and he could easily have become an orphan at that moment. Or maybe the naval family just got used to their father being in danger so often that they stopped paying much attention to it. And then for the next 18 days Navalny was in a coma, you could say experiencing half-death. Also, according to him, 
he was in the strongest drug trip and saw hallucinations about a Japanese doctor who was making him new legs and back. It was more real than you, he tells Yuri Dude. What's more, they didn't go away even after he came out of his coma. It was real agony, not pink elephants and rainbows as we are used to imagining cartoon hallucinations. Even after waking up, Navalny's hallucinations plagued him for about a week, and he was obsessed with the idea of escaping from the hospital. Recovering from such an adventure is a pit from which you slowly and heavily crawl out. And the worst part is that it's impossible to do it without the help of top-notch specialists. And if a politician did not have this opportunity, including financially, then at best he would remain disabled for the rest of his life. So, if there is no money for expensive modern medicine, it is better not to cross the road of the authorities of the Russian Federation. Whether the government and Putin were involved in the poisoning of Navalny? Yes, a good question about the involvement of the government or Vladimir Putin personally in this poisoning. Although such a substance, of course, can never be easily obtained by an ordinary person and is practically only available to representatives of special services and professional chemists. And so the Novichoke poisoning substance could have been on clothing, on a water bottle, or in food. The main thing is that once it enters the victim's body, it soon dissolves without a trace. Navalny claims that this is why they didn't want to let him out of the Omsk hospital. And the chief doctor, of course, said that the official diagnosis was a metabolic disorder and that this patient was non-transportable and could not be taken out. But with the help of the team and the politician's wife, they managed to wrestle him, as they say, out of the clutches of Russian medicine. Yulia even wrote an appeal to Putin asking him to release her husband from the hospital. She also consulted German doctors, and they made the official conclusion that the patient could survive the flight. Plus the public outcry helped ensure that Alexei was allowed to be released from the state hospital and transferred to a private western hospital. In an interview, he spoke out about this, saying that it was not beneficial for the authorities to make a show out of how he was dying. The interviewee also finds suspicious the disappearance of CCTV footage from the hotel where he stayed before his flight. And after it became known that he had been poisoned, the people who tried to seize evidence from Navalny's room were naturally not allowed inside. For his part, Dude said that Alexei suffers from megalomania. Well, the head of state could not have personally given an order to eliminate a political rival he did not like, even in such a way. But Navalny turned out to be convinced of the opposite. Putin personally gave the order to the director of the FSB or the head of the SFD. After all, such a rare substance as Novichok could not have been used without their knowledge. Furthermore, he is convinced that the process of using prohibited weapons is clearly regulated and documented. Although Yuri does not dismiss the possibility of the use of chemical weapons bypassing the president. After the discussion about the authorities' involvement in the poisoning, Dude asked if it was possible that the politician had been poisoned by people from his own team. Navalny replied that he completely ruled out such a possibility, arguing that this weapon requires specially trained assassins and possibly qualified chemists. The cost of treatment. Navalny goes on to say that Novichok was officially found in his body, and that it was lucky that he was not examined in a Moscow laboratory, because his death would have been attributed to some mysterious poisoning. Afterwards, Alexei suggests that his poisoning was some kind of public execution, because it was not only supposed to eliminate Russia's main opposition figure, but also to terrify everyone else who was unhappy with the modern regime. Although this guillotine never came down thanks to treatment in Germany, when asked by Yuri Dudya about the cost of the treatment, Navalny answers directly, that the private flight to Germany cost 75,000 euros, and the treatment cost about 60,000 to 70,000 euros. However, when the conversation continued about Alexei's money, he replied that his annual income was 5 million rubles. This amount is paid to him by entrepreneur and public figure Boris Simon for legal services provided by Navalny. Although Alexei himself calls it more of a support, Dude asked if it is normal to live on the money of a man who lives abroad and is an opponent of the existing system in Russia. It's clear to everyone what money Navalny's family lives on, the politician replies. What follows is a rhetorical question to Yuri. Do you know this about Putin? 
He also says that it's not normal that we don't even really know the names of Putin's daughters. And they ended their conversation about money with Yulia's words, my balance on my card now is minus five million dollars. It was all because of the arrest that had been made because of her husband's lawsuits. Plus another interesting fact is that because their daughter, Dasha, goes to Stanford, the couple need to confirm the fact that they earn less than a certain amount per year. They even had to write an extra explanation to the university because of such a negative balance, lest they think it was a silly joke. Although when dude asked, is it weighing on her psychologically? Yulia answered succinctly, no. Indeed, the composure of this woman can only be envied. I wonder what you would say if you had as much as minus five million dollars in your account. Homecoming. And in the end, the main question was when Navalny would return to Russia, because we already know what kind of trouble he would be in. And then he answered that he didn't know how long he would be in Germany. He is guessing no more than two months. But he will come back for sure, no matter what and all the obvious dangers. Alexei's wife is also not afraid to go home. She says that she and her husband will definitely return to their native country, but it will happen only after the full recovery of her husband. Dude also asked Navalny how many times she had asked Navalny to stop his political activities, but she said she couldn't understand how someone who was trying to make Russia better could be forbidden to do so. And the last in the interview, was the traditional question, what is the power? To which Navalny beautifully replied that, strength is in the truth. Which we, of course, as a portal for learning and self-development, cannot but support. And that is why we will continue to try to bring you the latest news from the world of politics and other, much more useful and constructive spheres. In the meantime, we also recommend that you learn a little more truth about the so-called Putin's palace, a review of which we also recently did on our channel in continuation of this topic. The link to it will be in the description. And as a conclusion let us note that to be on the side of Alexei Navalny, the Russian authorities or to be apolitical, a personal choice for everyone. The main thing to remember, if you keep silent today, it is far from certain that similar misfortune will not happen to you tomorrow. So be wise and conscious, actively manifest your civic positions, whatever they may be. And if you have any additions, objections or questions, please write. We will be happy to discuss them in the comments. And of course, very soon we will be expecting a selection of tips, insights, and short versions of other interesting videos, including those on a political topic, as we will continue to follow the latest developments around Alexei Navalny in this topic. Also, watch even shorter, minute-by-minute -minute summaries of our reviews to save even more time. And friends, don't forget to subscribe to the Summary Club for becoming more successful, educated, kinder, and wiser every day. Save hundreds of hours and dollars spending on boring regular education. Feel free to write your opinions and questions about each video. We read all the comments. In addition, go to our official website, where you can find reading materials or watch other videos on channel and links in the description. All the best.